In the last video, we took a look at RBD constraints inside Houdini. So let's build upon that. And in this video, let's look at how we can create those constraints from scratch, as well as use noise to control the braking. So let's go ahead and dive in here. I just have our scene set up here. I just brought in our geometry, which is just a bus that you can download from 3dscans.com. I'll leave a link to the site in the description. You can go and grab a, a free scan of this model. And all I've done is just remeshed it. And again, this project file will be available on Patreon if you would like to grab it there. You can go over all the different settings and everything that I used. So let's drop down a scatter node. So we are going to break our geometry first. So let's set this scatter to like 150 maybe. And then let's drop down a Verome fracture. That's what we're gonna be using to fracture our geometry. So we'll pipe everything in and we'll let this cook for just a second. Cause again, we want to just fracture our geometry to create the actual pieces of our model that they're then going to be falling apart or whatever you're going to do with those. So once this is cooked, we can take a look at what we got by using an RBD exploded view. Take a look there and you can see that we have this interesting little breakage going on. And if you paid attention in the last video, or if you watched the last video, you remember I said the constraints are basically just a bunch of lines connecting the centroids of the different pieces. So that kind of is what we're going to need to replicate. You can do that by extracting the centroid, create some points, and then we need to connect these using a connect adjacent pieces node. You can take a look at that and you can see we have just one little line going there. And once we up this search radius, you can see that we start getting more, but as I get to a certain point, it, it stops creating lines. We need to change the max number of connections so we can crank this up as high or as low as we want. I'll just set it to something like three. The more constraints you have, the harder it is for things to break apart. But this should work just fine. And then we need to actually create all of the different constraints that you get with like the material fracture and everything, all the different settings. So the glue and the strength and all that, we can do that really simply by doing an RBD constraint properties. So we'll wire in the lines into our constraints and then our geometry into the first input. And you can see we now have our lines connecting our individual points. And if I take a look at a null here, we can wire in our constraints and take a look at the geometry spreadsheet. And again, we have to look at our primitives because that's where everything lies in constraints. You can see that we have our different things that we need. So that's super cool. So we now have basically everything set up. So we can drop down a bullet solver and we will wire in our different inputs. And we'll go ahead and set the display flag there. We also need to come to this collisions tab and enable a ground plane. And you can see if I press play now, it doesn't fall apart, which is exactly kind of what we're looking for. And we can come into the glue constraints and set this down to zero, and then it should all fall apart here, which it does. And then we can do the same things that we were doing before. So if I take a look inside here, we can drop down a geometry, or sorry, not a yeah, geometry bop. And we can set this to run over primitives because again, we need to run over the primitives. That's where our constraints are. And then we also have to come to the data bindings and set up the it to run on the constraint geometry, not just the geometry. Then we can come in here and do a vector to float, pipe in our position. We'll do a compare. We'll pipe in the Y position. We'll see if it's greater than, and then we can promote this parameter control it outside of here and then we'll pipe that into our color and then we can drop down our wrangle like we did before again run over primitives and set the data bindings to the constraint geometry and then I can come into the code and if we do if at let's see if at cd.r all three of our color channels are the exact same because it's black and white 
if at cd.r is greater than 0.7, then we can remove prim. We'll take our current geometry that we're working on. We'll do at prim num, at prim num, and we'll just remove any points. That's what that third input means. Not really that big of a deal, but we'll wire that in there and then we should be all set. Take a look here. We have nothing going on. Let's take a look and see what we got wrong here. That's right, our input two, we forgot to change this. I set this to something like two. We should see some difference in our breakage, which we do. So only the head's falling apart now. And if I were to jump out here and wire our constraints into the null and look at that, you can see that we have just our just our bottom part still intact because our head is what we set to be removed. That's all been discarded by the simulation there. So let's use a noise to actually drive this. So we can't use just like an attribute noise if we would like to animate it. So if I look at this, Let's look at our constraints here. See, we have some noise on our constraints, but this doesn't really work to break it all up. If I play this simulation, you can see that it doesn't work based off of what we had. And if I go in here, let's just disable this. See, it doesn't really work like you might expect. And we can play around with the different settings. Let's say we wanted to, well, let's see. We have our constraints in here. Actually, we need to set it to points, or primitives, not points anyways. But if we take a look, it doesn't work exactly how we would want if we wanted to animate it. If we were to come in here, Try to animate this. You can see that it's not animating along. It is animating in here, but in our simulation, it doesn't work. So we need to actually do this inside of the solver here, which again, we can do with a simple geometry bop. So let's actually, we'll just copy this one over. And let's go ahead and delete that out. We'll drop down a turbulent noise. We'll wire that into the position, not the type. And then we also will need to fit this. So we'll just drop this down for the moment. Let's actually go back up. Actually, let's copy these two notes first. And let's go back up and we'll do a prim bop. If I can type properly. Let's dive in here, and this is gonna allow us to just view kind of what's going on super easily. So we'll wire this into our color, not our normal. If I can get that to disconnect, there we go. So we have our color. If I just bypass this, and see what we get here. And let's set this to something like Perlin. If I look at our geometry spreadsheet here, you can see that our color ranges from about 0.5 to 1.2. So we'll just leave things at default for now. And we'll set the source min to something a little bit lower than that. So we'll do like 0.4 to 1. Point, let's just do 1.4. That way if any animation happens and it tends or if it, it moves beyond those values, we should be at least somewhat okay. So now we we know what our values should be set at. We can just copy these nodes back, come back into our bullet solver, we'll delete these on out paste them in and wire in the color. And then I can promote the offset here, come back into our forces, we'll wire this up and we'll just set the offset to dollar FF divided by like 50 to give us a nice small or quick uh, rotation, not, not super quick movement here. So paste that into all three and you should see what we get. If I press play now, 
we have some breaking going on and you can see that things kind of start to break as we go. And if I look at our constraints, wire these on in and I'll take a look there. You can see that our constraints are being selectively removed and then it falls over and breaks apart, which is kind of what we're looking for. So that's a super quick and easy way that you can go about creating just kind of a more randomized and interesting looking destruction rather than just having it fall apart and break just kind of from a, a uniform way. This kind of breaks it up, makes it look a little bit more natural as if it's kind of like falling apart like an earthquake or something's going on. Pretty cool. But anyways, I have a bunch of other videos on my channel that go over different things inside Houdini. I've got a couple more things that are in this project file as well that I'm going to be covering in the next couple of videos. So if you want to get a hold of those now, you can go on Patreon and grab those and take a look through what all is in this file. But hopefully this helped you out. You learned something. Like I said, I got a bunch of other stuff on my channel about Houdini if you want to learn more about Houdini. I also cover a bunch of stuff on Redshift and I've done some Karma XPU and different things on there. So if you want to learn more about render engines as well, you can check those videos out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you learned something and have a good day.